how fast is Red Dwarf, and where could it have got to by the time it breaks the light barrier in the first season. Well, greetings fellow Dwarfers, I'm Dan, and I hope it's not too early in the morning to hit you with a bit of the Star Trek crap. To work out where the ship could possibly be, we need to know how far it could have possibly gone, and to work out that, we need to know approximately how fast it might have been going for its 3 million year journey. The eventual top speed of Red Dwarf is no secret. In the episode Future Echoes, the ship is shown to crack light speed. That's 671 million miles per hour, or 1.079 billion kilometers an hour. Now that is really moving. What we won't get into today is whether it's actually possible to break light speed. That's a topic for a whole nother episode. First up, let's get a little bit of context for the kind of speeds used in space travel. Back in 1969, the boys from Apollo were flung to the moon at an incredible 24,500 miles per hour. At this speed, they were covering almost seven miles every second. At this incredible speed, the boys got all the way to the moon in just three days. Light, or light speed, on the other hand, well, that makes Apollo look like it's standing still. Forget three days, blazing along at over 1 billion kilometers per hour, Red Dwarf could have got to the moon in 1.255 seconds. So we know Red Dwarf's top speed, but to get a decent average for its 30,000 century trip, it would help to know just how fast it was going at the moment Rimmer's incompetence wiped out the crew. In the novel, Infinity Welcomes Careful Drivers, a half inebriated Peterson says of Red Dwarf, it's an old ship, it only does 200,000 miles per hour. This gives us a bit of a starting place, but of course, the novels are non-canon, so let's see if we can find an on-screen reference for how fast a ship can go. Now we don't actually need a directly quoted speed, we just need to know a length of any journey and the time it took, and from that we can work out the speed. In the episode Stasis Leak, we're told that the ship was at Jupiter's moon Ganymede just a few weeks before the accident that wiped out the crew. While in the episode The End, Lister was sentenced to spend the remainder of the journey, 18 months, in stasis. So, taking the approximate distance of Ganymede to Earth, 628.3 million kilometers, dividing that by 18 months, or 547 and a half days, we get a speed of 47,815 kilometers per hour, or 29,710 miles per hour. That's pretty quick, and about 20% faster than Apollo, certainly within the realm of possibility for current space travel, but it seems a touch slow for the 22nd century, and it's a long way off the 200,000 miles an hour of the novel. Plus, this route presumes they were heading directly to Earth without any stops or detours. However, they did have Mars as a possible stopping point along the way, and they would have needed to navigate the asteroid belt. So let's dig a little deeper and see if we can find another early reference to another pre-accident journey and see if we can find something a little bit more direct. In the season 3 episode Marooned, Lister talks about a bar fight started by Rimmer while they were both on planet leave on Miranda. Now Miranda is really out there, it's 2.723 billion kilometers from Earth, being a moon of Uranus. Yes, have a giggle, Uranus. So we know Rimmer and Lister were both on Miranda together at some point, but how long was that before they reached Ganymede for the episode Stasis Leak, which would have been 1.80 billion kilometers away? Well, I think we can work that one out pretty accurately. In Waiting for God, Lister says he's been part of the Space Corps for only eight months. So if we take it that perhaps Lister actually joined the Red Dwarf crew at Miranda before the ship headed off to Ganymede, then we get an 8 month or 243 day travel time. So using the same calculation as before to work out the speed travelling from Miranda to Ganymede, we get a massive average cruising speed of 313,804 kilometers per hour or 194,988 miles per hour. Very close indeed to the novel's stated 200,000 miles per hour. 
And if we take seven days off the travel time for a stop off at Titan, enough time for Lister to steal his favorite blanket, we get an even greater average speed of 323,112 kilometers per hour, or remarkably, 200,772 miles per hour. That's less than half a percent off of Peterson's 200,000. I'm gonna take that as pretty much definitive. And as for Lister beginning his JMC career at Miranda, yes, it differs from the story in the novel, but I can't see this being any sort of issue. In fact, the only way I could imagine Lister going to a bar with Rimmer would be if they'd only just met and he didn't know any better. So if we suppose that Red Dwarf's normal cruising speed was 200,000 miles per hour, then we can use that as the starting speed for our three million year journey. Working in kilometers per hour, we can take the end speed of light speed or 1.09 billion kilometers per hour, add our start speed, 323,112 kilometers per hour, then divide that by two to get a three million year average of 539,661,556 kilometers per hour, or near as makes no practical difference, half the speed of light. And so with our average journey speed worked out, it really isn't much of a task to work out the total distance traveled. Much like how speed equals distance divided by time, we can work out the distance traveled by taking the speed and multiplying it by time. In this case, we take half of light speed times 3 million years, and we get a total distance traveled of 1.5 million light years. So a light year, or the distance light would travel in one year, is very hard to picture in our minds. So for a bit of reference, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is estimated to be between 100 and 200 thousand light years wide. That is a beam of light traveling at 1.079 billion kilometers per hour would still take 100,000 to 200,000 years to cross from one side to the other. Now that is a big distance. So with a total distance traveled of 1.5 million light years, Red Dwarf could have crossed and recrossed the galaxy between seven and a half and 15 times. However, that is assuming you could take a straight line directly across which you cannot, as the center of our galaxy is dominated by a rather unfriendly supermassive black hole. We also know Red Dwarf didn't simply plod around in circles, going back over the same route. Otherwise, there would have been no need for it to have to spend 4,000 years turning around, and it also wouldn't have taken another 3 million years to get home. More likely, Holly took a twisting, turning route through our galaxy, needing to avoid cosmic phenomenon, obstacles, and gravity-intensive areas along the way. Realistically, Red Dwarf could be just about anywhere in our galaxy. And depending just how winding of a route it had to take, it might actually not appear to have gone all that far. However, personally, I think it likely, given the huge journey time, that the ship is probably on the far side of our galaxy somewhere. In fact, I'm even going to have a stab at guessing the approximate route. Holly's dialogue from the beginning of the episode Marooned tells us that the ship didn't encounter any black holes along its 3 million year journey. Knowing that, we can plot the positions of suspected black holes onto a map of the Milky Way and try and draw a nice smooth line that avoids black holes and still takes a fairly direct route to the far side of the galaxy. The ship would still need to take a snaking route to account for the huge journey distance being far longer than the galaxy itself, but as the ideal route for them to follow, I think this works, and I'm pretty happy to say I reckon the ship could be somewhere around this top right corner of the map. Honestly though, I'm guessing, and your guess really is as good as mine, and we're basically just playing Astro Navigation Pin the Tail on the Donkey here. And throughout all of this, I'm not even taking into account the fact that the galaxy has depth to it as well, being about 1,000 light years thick. I'm gonna throw out one more possibility before we leave this galactic conundrum where it is. What if Holly didn't even bother trying to traverse our galaxy at all, but instead just shot the ship straight out into intergalactic space? Where would they have ended up if they just went in a straight line for 1.5 million light years? Well, that's actually a pretty easy one to answer. Given the amount of moons and stars and planets that the ship encounters, we know it's in a galaxy somewhere. 
So looking at a chart of local galaxy distances, we can see that there's one more or less precisely where we need it to be, the appropriately named Phoenix Dwarf Galaxy, which is 1.44 million light years from Earth. Accounting for a bit of margin of error and the time it might have taken to navigate out of our galaxy, I think this one's in just about the right spot. So for those of you who might prefer your sci-fi in a galaxy far, far away, then it looks like the Phoenix Dwarf Galaxy is the place to go. However, personally, I think that while the Space Corps could possibly have gone to explore other galaxies at some point, I think the sheer amount of human space junk, other ships and facilities that the boys encounter suggests that they're still within the Milky Way galaxy somewhere, with the human race having explored and colonised our galaxy using various forms of fast and light travel during the time that Lister was in stasis. So what do you think guys? Obviously, I'm presenting an incredibly simplified version of astrophysics here, taking almost no amount of orbital dynamics into account, treating planets and galaxies as if they're static and unmoving, and working from a lot of unconfirmed, averaged out numbers. But hey, Red Dwarf is, by absolutely no means, any sort of serious hardcore sci-fi, and I'm really just having a bit of fun with a thought that I had about how fast and how far that ugly red trash can might have gone. So as I say, this is just a bit of fun, not conclusive at all, but you know, give us your opinions on what you think. Where could the ship be? Is it in our galaxy? Is it in another galaxy? Is it somewhere I hadn't even thought of? Let me know in the comments below. And let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. I've got one in the pipeline looking at just how ginormous the ship really is. Let us know if that's something you wanna see. Guys, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you could give us a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you've not done so already so that you know when the next video is out and you won't miss one. And hit the bell icon to really make sure you won't miss one. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time, Smugheads.